First Peter uh, chapter 2, and starting in verse number 22, read it says, and this is speaking of, of Christ, who did no sin, neither was gall found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye are healed. For you were as sheep gone astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. You know, the, the more I hear about Christ, the more thankful that I am. Amen. You know, the more that you remember, the more that um, you hear about what he has done, the more thankful that you are. Amen. You know, I was, um, in thinking about what he has done, for us and what he has done there there is a lot that has been recorded um, in in the record that God has given of his son but um, and these things that um, that are uh, that we read these things that are preached to us in the gospel they bring about um, happiness they bring about joy within us in our verse 24, it brought out, it says, Who his own self bore our sins. You know, Jesus didn't, while he was here, seek out someone else to, to, to take his place or to replace him. But he himself was the one who bore our sins Amen. for us. Amen. Amen. Who else was available for anyway for him to do something like this there was no one else available that could be able to do what Jesus did or could do no one um, in the scriptures we find nowhere where it says Jesus and so-and-so bore our sins but it says who he himself bore our sins for example, there was no one else where it says, like verse number 22, who did no sin. But it was Jesus who it is said, who did no sin. Neither was guile found within him, in his mouth. And so there was no one else that could do what Jesus had done. No one else could do what he did, or what he does, or even what he is doing, even uh, in our lives today. Amen. Isaiah 63 3 says, I have trodden the winepress alone, and the people there, and of the people there was none with me. And so this was something that he had done alone. Jesus bore our sins in his body on the tree, and Isaiah said, Surely he has borne our griefs and has carried our sorrows. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. Amen. This was sin in its entirety, yeah. in its wholeness. All of it, Amen. all of it was placed upon him in, other th in order that he may take it away. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So God laid it, up, laid it upon Him that He might judge it and that He might condemn it in His flesh. <clears throat> Jesus Himself bore the whole... The, he, he bore the whole sin of the whole race taking the responsibility for the sins of the world upon himself. As Isaiah, as Isaiah said, he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. 
the chastisement of our peace was upon him. The sins of all the people were not dwelt one by one. You know, Jesus didn't have to die again and again for each person. But all of it was... Uh, in, in its entirety was put upon him. Rather, they were addressed in its entirety. Jesus literally took away the sin of the world, as John one twenty nine says. John one twenty nine says, um, The next day John saw Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Yeah. And so this is the sin that Jesus had taken away, all of it in its entirety. Hebrews 9, 26, For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to, take, to put sin away by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him to appear, he appeared the second time without sin unto salvation. So it was, it was one time that he had to do this. It was one time and it was effective. Uh, Christ's death was effective to take care of our sins. And we see the results of this also. It says that that we having died to sin might live for righteousness. So we see the effectus, the effectiveness of the the death of Christ and what it had accomplished for us. Also it is stated that those who live shall no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. So we see that the, there was a great effectiveness of the death of Christ that at one time we had lived for ourselves, but now we live for Him. Amen. Verse 25 of our text, in, back in uh, for, uh, 1 Peter 2.25, it says, For ye were as sheep gone astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. There was a time where we had no sense of direction. And we were getting further and further and further away from God. You know, when we were without God, we, we were going further away from Him until He drew us to, unto Himself. Apart from His inter intervention into, in our lives, we were in a hopeless condition. Isaiah again said, All of we were like sheep gone astray, and we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. And so we were going astray. The only resolution of sin, only the resolution of sin could correct this situation. It had to be resolved. Amen. Otherwise, we would still be going in that direction. And that is precisely what God did when he that is precisely why God laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. Yes, yes, Apart amen. from that action, we couldn't, we couldn't return to the Lord. But we thank God for our Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our, the chief shepherd, yes, as 1 Peter 5, 2 says. And also the scripture calls him our good shepherd, uh, John 10, 11, and the great shepherd. Hebrews 13 20 we are now a part of his fold and he feeds us and cares for us Amen. John 10 11 says I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep and also Hebrews 13 20 now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so at this time, as we prepare to remember Christ and remember what, 
was accomplished through his death. Let us remember and, and think on these things this morning. And I'd like to uh, offer a word of prayer as before we uh, think on these things. Heavenly Father, God, we come before you and we are, are thankful for being able to continually remember our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and, and what he has accomplished for us, um, not only in his death, but also in his, his life as well. We thank you for this time as we come to commune with you, that you would, um, that the that there wouldn't be any distractions as we come before you, but we would be able to um, come um, wholeheartedly and, and come uh, with a mind to, to, to remember and to, and to, um, and to be blessed by, by our thoughts upon you. And we praise things in Jesus' name. Amen.